Hello YouTube, welcome to this very first review, book review that I'm going to uh, introduce on this channel that I hope is going to become a series that is going to be recurrent. And we're going to start with one of my favorite book, which is the book of five rings. The types of books I'm going to be reviewing are always going to be linked to either lifting or philosophy. And by philosophy, I mean that it, ha it has to be something that can be put in relation with bodybuilding or training as a whole. It doesn't necessarily have to do with making your body bigger and more muscular, but it, have, it has to have to do with the spirit of improving, be it mentally or physically. Uh, I'm not going to be reviewing technical books or exercise science books because I don't really have any use for these books. Um, but the, the work I want to be able to put forth is not necessarily to tell you the content of the book, but how I read it and how I relate it to my passion, which is bodybuilding. I personally have degrees in literature um, and I have a certain approach when it comes to books. I hope to make a lot of critiques and especially literature critiques on this channel. So this is the first entry. The Book of Five Rings was written by Miyamoto Musashi, which is the most famous samurai figure of all times is known to be the strongest samurai that has ever existed. Now, whether you believe he existed or not, whether you believe that his accomplishments were just legends or not, I'm not going to worry about that in this video. Uh, it's, this is not myth buster. I'm going to go from what we know of the character and what I learned from him reading his book. So, as far as he who he was as a person. I'm not going to talk about that too much. You can do your own research if you want. There are a lot of things said about the man. Some I believe, some I don't. But one thing I can say for sure is that Musashi wasn't the best writer. Uh, I say that knowing that I'm reading a translated version and that my Japanese is not good enough to read the book in its original language. That being said, I also have a degree in translation. And I can, I, I know that depending on the translation you get your hands on, there might be slight differences, but the essence of the writing cannot be lost if the tr unless the translator is, is actively corrupting the, or the source text, what, what we call the ST, which is not the case here. But this is not a bad thing, actually. It, it's going to be when you first read the book, because on, on the first re read, you're going to be extremely confused by the contents of the books for many reasons. I'm going to explain those reasons. So basically the way this review is going to work is I'm just going to go through the book, uh, starting page one, and I'm going to stop at certain segments that I think are relevant. I'm going to explain the spirit behind them, what I think they mean, and relate them to training, physical and mental training. So the Book of Five Rings is, is Musashi's method towards the art of war, towards the way of the warrior, in which he explains what he learned throughout his life. And at the very start of the book, he gives a brief introduction to his life, where he explains why he started fighting in the first place, how he, becomes, he became samurai, the, the defeats... Uh, he managed to, uh, to achieve the people he beat and killed, the score he started, the, the, the lords he served, etc., etc. And as far as the book goes, he basically says that he has been fighting ever since he was 13. And he fought between the ages of 13 and 28 or 29 years old. So that is 15 years he spent fighting. I think this is a, already an important portion of the message that he's transmitting here, because he says that throughout those 15 years, he kept progressing, his body kept progressing. So even if you don't take into consideration um, the fact that he was not through puberty at 13, 
even if you you base uh, the judgment on the fact that his puberty lasted maybe until he was 18, that's still 10 years of progress. It's relevant for me because the YouTube fitness uh, community has somehow convinced itself that you are going to reach your limits in five years of training. I, I hear people say three years sometimes. I don't believe in that, not even a second. And Musashi didn't believe in that either. But in the book, he says that at that time, he was at the peak of his physical strength. That was, well, that's when he was 30. And if you research the feats of strength that, that Musashi was able to accomplish, he was said to be able to crush bamboo with his bare hands. He was said to be able to throw a man by grabbing them by the limb. So basically, grab someone by the foot and just throw them. Uh, he was able to break the hilt of a sword with his grip. All of these things, of course, are legendary feats. We have no way to know if it was true or not. The reason why I tell them is because those feats, most of them were performed when he was 30. He never says whether he declined in ability or not. He does say, although, that before he was 30, he never really thought about any of it. Meaning that he was already a god of war but had never really thought about strategy. By his own words, the previous victories were not due to my having mastered strategy. Perhaps it was natural ability. He never confirms it or not, but anyone who has done sports at a high level have met people like this. People with insane potential who know nothing about the sport, they don't watch tapes. Uh, when everyone's watching tapes with the teams, they're doing something else. They don't really train that hard and they're just better than anyone else. This is God-given talent. And this is what Musashi had. He was, he was a very gifted warrior. He didn't have strategies by his own words. He just struck the enemy down. He never really thought about it. It doesn't mean he didn't have technique. Technique is not strategy. There is a distinction and the same exists for lifting. You can have very good technique, you can have insane squat form, doesn't mean that your strategy surrounding your squat training is proper. And this is what he realized at 30. And this is when he decided to study. So when you study, you go beyond just the physical aspect of the task and you start reflecting on the task itself. He says, since then, I have lived without following any particular way. This might sound counterintuitive. You might think, well, he studied so many years and in the book he said that, that he achieved mastery of his own mind when he was 50. So 20 years of studying. All of that to not follow anything. I understand where people are coming from because nowadays, the more you study, the more biased you become towards what you study. This is just the nature of the beast. But in my opinion, because I agree with Musashi on that, it shouldn't be. The more you study, the more open-minded you should become. If you become more stubborn and more stuck in your ways as you study, you're not studying correctly. And some people might say, oh, it's because I found the way that works. There is not just one way. The way is infinite. There are definitely bad ways, but there are no perfect and optimal way. You have to find what works for you. And this is what he says here. So Musashi was anti-dogma, which I appreciate a lot. The reason why I didn't really talk about that much, the reason why I say that the first read is going to be strange is because you are reading the book of someone who was already a genius when they were 13. And something I found with people naturally gifted is that they have a very tough time explaining their talents to people. Talk to, like I have, like champion swimmers and tell them, how do you do it? How are you so fast? Like most of the time they won't be able to explain to you or if they do, it's going to be so abstract that you won't get it. On the other hand, people who work really hard because they didn't have talent are going to sit you down. They're going to tell you about their stroke, about the time, the, the, their breath timing, all of that stuff it's much more clear in their head because they've had to study the way of strategy. If you are gifted, you don't need to study like he was. 
he reached the age of 30 not having to think about it once. But eventually he sat down and started studying and he put his words in the book. The thing is, he still has that insane talent that makes it so that sometimes he cannot explain what he, what he means, meaning that he'll tell you something completely outrageous and then say, this is the way it is and just study more and you'll understand. You might study your entire life and never understand what he says. So let's start with the ground book. There are, there are five books in the, in the five rings and this is the first one. And Musashi tells, uh, tells us, there is no warrior in the world today who really understands the way of strategy. I think that this thought applies to this day, even a thousand years later. And I say a thousand years, it's not a thousand years, it's 600 years. He lived 600 years ago, roughly. Which, what does it mean? It means that no one knows it all. Anyone who tells you they know everything about lifting, about bodybuilding, about powerlifting, about Olympic weightlifting is a liar. Or they lie to themselves. No one knows it all. And Musashi includes himself. He doesn't know everything. He continues. And as I do that reading, I'm skipping certain things because certain things don't apply. And also I want you to discover the book by yourself. Each man practices as he feels inclined. That's an aspect of lifting that you shouldn't be ashamed of. You're going to like certain things. You might not even like lifting. You might like certain sports better. There is no fault in that. Do what you like. It's very important that you always do what you like. Because if you embrace something that you don't feel passionate about, you're not going to last and you're not going to make progress. Even if a man has no natural ability, he can be a warrior by sticking assiduously to both divisions of the way. The both divisions of the way are the pen and the sword, which is to me the theoretical, the theoretical aspect and the practical aspect, which is studying, lifting. It can be through books, but it should, in my opinion, be through self-reflection and the sword, which is actually lifting. People who have only the pen are even more useless than people who only have the sword. I will take someone who lives with no knowledge at all and no introspection over someone who just studies lifting. Because at least that person is getting empirical experience from what they're doing. The other one is just a, a lab rat. They do not understand high, uh, lifting. They don't understand the love of the iron. And... As he says too, even if you have no natural ability, you can still become that warrior. You might not be the best warrior, but you're still going to develop that mindset for yourself. And I relate to that because my genetics for bodybuilding are subpar. I really don't have good genetics, but I still love it. And I've still, I still have achieved, achieved some pretty good results. He also says that the way of the warrior is resolute acceptance of death. That's a topic that I'm going to talk about in many literature reviews, not just that one, especially when it comes to Bushido and the way of the warrior, because it's a, it's a mentality that's very important, being a dead man walking. I'm not going to spend too much time on it now, but I'm going to go, come back to it eventually. The warrior is different and that studying the way of strategy is based on overcoming other men. This is where the way of the iron and the way of the sword diverge in a way, because you don't, unless you're competing, but even if you're competing in powerlifting and bodybuilding, lifting is about conquering yourself. It's about defeating your demons. It's about always pushing the boundaries and the limits. This is what you're trying to overcome. I have personally found that people who try to always uh, surpass someone else don't really make it far. You need to have either a fictional goal in mind or an ethical goal that always evolves, which is my case. Musashi says, the true value 
of sword fencing cannot be seen within the confines of sword fencing techniques. What does that mean? It means that he basically states that being good at drawing your sword and slashing through the enemy is not the true value of what the way of the warrior is. It's not just that. Just like being good at lifting weights is not all there is to be about being a bodybuilder. There is more to that. The mental aspect is just as important, the, important as the physical aspect. And if you want to be great on the physical side, you need to be great on the mental side. They go hand in hand. You cannot separate the two. There is a way to separate the two. It's called PEDs. But we're not going down that path because on this channel, at least, we promote natural lifting. And I'm going to end this video on the last quote. And the quote is, In this kind of way of strategy, both those teaching and those learning the way are concerned with coloring and showing off their technique, trying to hasten the bloom of the flower. They speak of this dojo and that dojo. They're looking for profit. Someone once said, immature strategy is the cause of grief. That was a true saying. I personally relate that quote to what YouTube fitness and fitness in general has become. It has become a place where people try to sell you things. It is not about sharing knowledge anymore, or at least the big channels are not about that anymore. There is always something eventually that comes up that is going to be sold to you. And that thing is always going to be the best and the most efficient and is going to be promoted through the person trying to sell it to you. And that person might also have what Musashi calls a dojo. Dojo can be many things. A dojo can be a sp specific method. It can be a specific mentality. It can be any type of belief system that you're going to become a part of because you follow the master, the sensei of the dojo, who then uses their influence on you to get your money. In my opinion, if you watch YouTube and you watch a channel and that person who owns the channel starts selling you stuff, this is when you should be really worried and you should start questioning that person. And the reason why this is so bad too is because, as he says, they become more concerned with coloring and showing off their technique, trying to hasten the bloom of the flower. Hastening the bloom of the flower, what is that? Well, that is all these people who make videos that they call how to make gains fast, big arms fast, big legs fast, look, look better fast. It cannot be fast by definition. Natural lifting past the novice phase is not fast. It's a slow process. And people who hasten the bloom of the flower either use a specific substance to make the flower grow faster or they don't let the flower bloom to its full potential. They rush it and they risk injury. And that method of making the flower bloom faster, as he states here, is also based on fake knowledge and fakeness in general. It's the coloring and show, showing of their technique. It's someone who are going to tell you, oh, I got this through these means. And if you apply these means, you'll get it like this. This is not a bad thing per se. It becomes a bad thing if that thing that they're talking about, you need to pay for. And this is what also he denounces here. People who take students and the students would have to pay the dojos. And he thinks this is not the true way. And I agree. He says they're looking for profit. Before that, and I will end on that, this is the last part of the paragraph. If we look at the wood, we see arts for sale. Men use equipments to sell their own selves. As if with the nut and the flower, the nut has become less than the flower. What is the nut and what is the flower? In my opinion, the flower is the result. It's the, the end product. What is the nut? It is what constituted those results before they bloomed. What was 
in your mind before you achieved the results. It is your train of thoughts. It is your will. It is the methods you applied. All of these things are more important than the flower. In my opinion, the knowledge I gained on arm training is more important than the size of my arms because it is something that I can share with people. And I think that's the, that's also, if we were to dive even deeper, that's the difference between the nut and the flower. What is a flower good for? It is pretty, smells good. And there's always the chance that because it is pretty, it is going to attract an insect that is going to botanize it and then spread its pollen around and create all the flowers such as a good physique. A good physique is pretty and a good physique is going to attract attention. Between a theoretical video or a video where I flex, which of the two is going to make more views? The video where I flex takes me zero effort, lasts maybe a minute, is going to make 10 times more views. Why? Because people are attracted by the flower. But my job and the job of people in the natural lifting community is to make the nut more palatable in a sense because the nut is what the flower came from the flower that you see at the end is my personal results you're never going to achieve that but i can tell you how i made it bloom we might not start with the same nut and we might not not going to end up with the same flower that's for sure but the methods that i used to bloom you can learn from and you can, you can evolve from that. And this is why when the nut becomes less than the flower, everyone suffers. The physique and the end result that are being used to sell products and supplements and methods and programs and training and coaching shouldn't matter that much. The, the knowledge that led to it should. That's what should be spread and it should be shared for free because that knowledge is much more applicable. It is something that can actually benefit a larger amount of people deeper than just looking at a pretty physique and being told that there is a fast pass way to get it. I would much rather be open and tell you all the mistakes I made when I was trying to grow so that you can avoid these mistakes. And you can also then pass that knowledge on to other people. So this is it for um, the part one of the book of five rings. This is going to be a long series because as you see, I like to dive deep and I like to really go into the details. So I will make sure to keep uploading those videos. I will make sure that we go through the book. If you have books that you like, let me know in the comments. I might make reviews on them. Thank you for watching.